This is the second lecture on topic 3.1 and in this lecture we're going to look at the concept of the limiting reactant and its evil twin sister excess. Right, chemical reactions proceed until one or more reactants are completely used up. As soon as you run out of one reactant the reaction will stop. So let's look at this simple made up reaction A plus B reacting to give you this new compound AB. So let's say we start off with two moles of A which I will display as two A's and two moles of B. There's our two moles of B. So mix them all together in a beaker and A will react to B to give me a molecule of AB. We've now got less reactants. Another molecule of A will react to another molecule of B to produce a second molecule of AB. We've got no more reactants left so the reaction will have stopped. However, say we've got three moles of A and two moles of B. There's my three moles of A and there's my two moles of B. We've got more reactants but we're not going to produce any more product because one more of A reacts with one more of B, another more of A reacts with another more of B, but this third more of A has got nothing left to react with. So it's not good to react. So even though we've got more of A, in this case, we're not producing any more product. In this case, B is a limiting reactant and A, reactant A is in excess. So the limiting reactant, you always end up with nothing of it. It's all been used up. And importantly, it's a limiting reactant What's the amount of the limiting reactant which controls how much product's made. We only had two moles of B which was the limiting reactant so we produced two moles of AB. So the limiting reactant is more important than the one that's in excess because the limiting reactant is used to determine the quantity of the product made. Let's look at a real example. Okay, so 64.2 grams of magnesium are reacted with 64.2 grams of sulfur. There's a balanced equation. So the question is, which reactant is in excess? And which one is the limiting reactant? Okay, so we've got enough information in the question to work out the number of moles of magnesium and the number of moles of sulfur. So the number of moles of magnesium well, we've got 64.2 grams divided by the gram formula mass, which is 24.3, and we work out we've got 2.64 moles of magnesium. Sulfur, again, we've got 64.2 grams. Its gram formula mass is 32.1, so we have 2 moles of sulfur. Okay, so we've got 2.64 moles of magnesium, 2 moles of sulphur. Okay. When it's a simple one-to-one -one ratio, it's quite simple. The limiting reactant is the one you've got less of. So the sulphur is the limiting reactant, which means the magnesium is in excess. And if you're doing this in an exam, they want you, there'd usually be a two-mark question, and it would for, to get the second mark, you would then need to say that Magnesium is in excess because only two moles will react so and you had 2.64 moles so you've got some left over. So sulfur is the limiting reactant and the second question is what mass of magnesium sulfide is produced. Well, as I said in the previous slide, it's a limiting reactant which determines how much uh, 
product is made. So two moles of this reacted, sulfate magnesium sulfide in a one to one ratio, so we'll produce two moles of magnesium sulfide. So the mass of magnesium sulfide will be the number of moles times the grand formula mass, which is 56.4, which means we'll make 112.8 grams of magnesium sulfide. So it's really quite straightforward when the, both the reactants are in a one-to-one -one ratio. So what I move on now, I'll look at the more complicated Cray case where the reactants aren't in a one-to-one -one ratio. So here's our made up one, A plus 2B goes to this compound, BAB. So let's say we've got 3 moles of A and 4 moles of B. Well, if it's just a 1 to 1 ratio, we know A is the limiting reactant because there's less of it. But it's not a 1 to 1 ratio, it's a 1 to 2 ratio. So we have to work it out, it could be either A or B. So let's put in our 3 moles of A and our 4 moles of B. Okay, so in this reaction, 1 mole of A reacts with 2 moles of B. So we produce one more one molecule of BAB. Okay. Then another molecule of A reacts with another two molecules of B. But now we've run out of B. So despite the fact we've got some A left over, uh, no further reaction is going to happen because we've run out of our limiting reactant. So the B is our limiting reactant. That's the one that we run out of. So even though we had less moles of A than we did of B, A was actually the one that was in excess. Because to get all three moles of A to react, we'd actually need to have six moles of B. But we only had four. So let's look at a more realistic example. So 80 cubic centimetres of 2 mole plate hydrochloric acid reacted with 4.01 grams of calcium. There's a balanced equation, not a 1 to 1 ratio, a 1 to 2 ratio. So again, which reactant is in excess? So as before, we have to start off by working out how many moles of calcium, how many moles of HCl. Well, number of moles of calcium, we had 4.01 grams divide by the gram formula mass of 40.1 we've got 0 0.1 moles the number of moles of HCl concentration times volume so that's 2 times and volume in litres 0 0.08 so it's 0 0.16 moles okay. so we've got 0 0.1 moles of calcium 0.16 moles of HCl. Right, so which one's the limiting reactant? Which one's in excess? Well, if 0.1 moles of calcium reacts, we need to have twice that amount of HCl, which is 0.2. We don't have 0.2 moles, we've only got 0.16 moles, so that doesn't work. So the 0.16 moles of HCl, we do only require half that amount, 0 0.08 moles of calcium to react. So this is the one that does work. Okay. So we run out the HCl, all 0.16 moles react. So that's our limiting reactant and our calcium is in excess. So again, if it's an exam, you'd need to write calcium is in excess. because, and just say how much reacts, because only 0 0.08 moles reacts. And that'd be enough to get you the second mark. So again, despite the fact we've got a smaller number of moles of calcium than HCl, the calcium is in excess, and HCl is the limiting reactant. 
because we need twice the amount of HCl as we do calcium for this reaction. And again, if you want to work out the mass or concentration or whatever of a product, it's a limiting reactant that's important. So what is the mass of hydrogen produced? The HCl and the hydrogen are in a 2 to 1 ratio. So the number of moles of hydrogen will be 0 0.08. So the mass of hydrogen for the number of moles 0 0.08 times 2 equals 0 0.16 grams. Okay, so that's quite a tricky concept and it's probably one that you need to try several questions to get uh, good at. So let's just look at one more example. 500 cubic centimetres of propane are mixed with 4,000 cubic centimetres of oxygen and ignited. Calculate the volume of the gas mixture formed. Okay, so this doesn't expressly ask you to work out the limiting reactant or what's in excess, but the clue is they've given you information about both reactants, 500 cubic centimetres of that, 4,000 cubic centimetres of this. Because they're both gases, we do not need to convert these volumes into moles. We couldn't because it doesn't actually tell us what the molar volume is. So remember, for gases, the volume is directly proportional to the number of moles. So we've got 500 cubic centimetres of the propane, 4,000 of the oxygen. One of those two will be in excess and it will be the limiting reactant which controls how much product is produced. So let's see, would all 500 of this react? Well for 500 of this react, we need 5 times the amount, 5 times the volume of oxygen, which would be 2,500. We've got that, so all 500 of this will react, so this is a limiting reactant, this is an excess, and it will produce 150, no sorry, 1,500 cubic centimetres of CO2 gas, and the water is not a gas, so uh, questions only about the volume of gas formed, so we don't need to worry about the gas. So the gas mixture at the end of the reaction will be 1500 cubic centimetres of CO2, but don't forget you've still got your unreacted oxygen. You had 4000 cubic centimetres of oxygen, only 2500 reacted, so you also had 1500 cubic centimetres of oxygen gas left over as well. Okay, so four things you must be able to do. Determine the limiting reactant in any given equation. Explain why a reactant is in excess. Use the limiting reactant to calculate the quantity of product made and carry out related calculations involving gases without converting to moles.